All right, welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today our guest is David Flood. David is the married father of two children. He's a board member of Kids Plus, a nonprofit which helps special needs children. He's also a member of the Drug and Alcohol Task Force in his hometown of Northport, New York on Long Island. David has been a lector at his church parish for over 30 years. He's also a hospice volunteer that visits with terminally ill patients. He's spoken in 38 states and Canada to over 400,000 students. His last three Facebook videos have received over 100 million views. Welcome to the show, David. Tyler, thank you so much for having me on, on this uh, beautiful Thursday afternoon. I hope it's uh, beautiful where everybody uh, is inside or outside. Hopefully people are outside. Uh, again, I'm, I'm really happy to be on today. Uh, very strange time that we're going through, obviously, now for, for all of us, you know, with different parts of the country. I happen to be in New York and, and, you know, we're struggling greatly here. But what I've been doing from home lately and what I'm going to do for, for you guys and girls who are on, on uh, Tyler's uh, virtual assembly today is to talk about what I talk about in schools. I usually, guys and girls, give a, about a 45 minute to one hour talk. You're not going to sit through 45 minutes to an hour now. I'm just going to talk for a few minutes. And then, you know, we're even going to take some questions. Tyler might ask me some questions um, about some things to expand on some things that I talk about. So a couple of things you guys should know about me. Um, one is, No one knows that language, right? That means my wife is from a city in the Philippines called, called Paranaque. My wife is Filipino. Um, I have two children. Uh, Sarah and Justin, who look nothing like me. Uh, they look like their mom. My, my kids look a lot like their mom. They look Asian. Uh, as a matter of fact, when my daughter was, was a baby, I was in a bank uh, one time, and, uh, and uh, she was up on the counter in the bank, and I was minding my own business, making my transaction. And a woman behind me in the bank looked at me, and then she looked over at my daughter, and she looked back at me, and she said, she's beautiful. Where'd you get her? So I told her Walmart. No, I, didn't, I, I did say that, because I'm a bit of a wise guy. You know, people say things without thinking. They they just, you know, a lot, we all do that, right? We all say things without thinking. And um, I know it's hard to to uh, to break that habit. And Sarah's an awesome kid. She's a freshman in college, although she's not, you know, she's working from home, obviously. Uh, she was a freshman at the University of Delaware this year, and she's now home with us. And my son, Justin, uh, who is 21 now, is the reason that I go out, guys and girls, and speak. Justin is, is a great kid, he likes anime, he's a big, you know, big fan of anime, um, and Justin has autism. And he struggled tremendously when he was in, in, in elementary school and middle school and high school. And when I go out and speak in schools, I talk about him a lot. And what I've done with my assemblies uh, is give three challenges to kids when I go you know, into a school and I tell a story and make a point and give them a challenge and then, you know, move on to the second challenge. So I'm going to tell you guys and girls the challenges that I give when I'm in schools. And, you know, Tyler can ask me more about these things. I think he'll ask the questions that you guys might have uh, after I'm done speaking in a few minutes. So the first challenge that I give to kids and to staff, because I think, you know, a lot of schools I'm in, guys and girls, the administrators and the teachers come up to me and they say, David, thank you for, you know, speaking to us today. And I was like, well, I was here for the kids. And like, no, 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 we, we brought you in because the staff really needed to, to hear your, uh, your message too. So the first challenge what I give when I'm in schools is to look on the inside of people. And because we judge people a lot by what's on the outside. And you know, the messages I've been sending to schools over the past two months since we've been in this, this lockdown, this isolation, this semi-quarantine thing that we're in, um, is that we're all alike on the inside. And when you realize that, it should give you empathy and compassion for someone. You know, you should have empathy and compassion for everyone, but certainly if you can acknowledge that you're the same as someone, like we're all susceptible to getting sick. My family's just like your family. I'm just like you. We're no different, right? No matter, we might live in different parts of the country. We might practice different religions. We might have different color skin. Uh, you're from this country, whatever, but we're all the same when it comes right down to it. So it's so important that we look to, you know, look on the inside of people. Um, the second challenge that I give to kids in schools is to connect with, and I would encourage you guys, I don't know where any of you are watching me in the country or how far along you are in school or if the year is almost done. I know if you're on the West Coast, school's almost finished for the year. Uh, schools in New York, we don't finish until like mid-June, the third week of June. But it's so important, guys and girls, that you connect with 
show respect for, and say thank you to two adults that I, I usually say in your building. They're not in your building now, but it, and especially now because teachers are struggling. Uh, and I, I was walking with a principal friend the other day, and he was telling me how his students are doing well. He's more worried about his teachers, how they're so frustrated that they can't make any connection or engage their students online. So it's so important, guys and girls, and you can have a bad day and you can have fun and things like that, and, but it's so important that you stay connected to and acknowledge your teachers because don't you wanna be the kid when school gets back in that your teacher looks at you and says, hey, thank you for showing up virtually online. Thank you for getting your assignment in and thank you for you know, helping me navigate that, that, you know, that technical problem I was having you know, and contributing in class when everybody else is yawning and doing all kinds of things on the camera. So it's so important now more than ever, guys, you need to stay connected to your teachers. And the third challenge that I give in schools is kind of a, it, it's the most important one to me, but it's not something that you can practice right now. And that challenge is that no one should have to eat alone. You know, when Justin was in middle school and high school, he used to eat alone every single day. And that was crushing to me as a parent when he would come home and tell my wife and I, I'd say, Justin, where'd you eat lunch today? And he'd say, daddy ate alone. Now I know you can't eat with anyone now, but what you can do guys and girls is reach out to someone. I mean, think of a kid in your school who's isolated normally during the regular school year when you're in school. Think of how doubly isolated they are now. And maybe you can reach out to them through Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or a text. Yeah, you know, I had a, a teacher email me a couple of weeks ago and she said, David, I'm having a really hard time engaging my students online. And she teaches deaf students. She teaches students who are hearing impaired. And I wrote back to her. I said, when was the last time any of your students got a, maybe got a handwritten letter in the mail? And she said, oh, my God, I never even thought of that. I never thought to write to them. And it's funny because right now my daughter and I are writing out cards to our relatives, tell them we're thinking of them. It would be easy for me to pull out some note paper and send letters to all my students. And that's something that's so simple, but it has so much meaning. And I don't know how much kids write now. I don't think you guys do a lot of writing. You do a lot of typing and a lot of this and a lot of this, but you don't do too much of this, right? Put a pen to paper, maybe send a letter to someone who's struggling. And you have no idea the value that that could have in someone's life. So the three challenges that I, that I would give to you, and we can expand on them more with Tyler, look on the inside, reach out, connect with, stay connected to and engage your teachers now more than ever. And no one eats alone. And that means don't let anybody slip into isolation, sadness, depression, loneliness, all of those things that, you know, people are susceptible to getting sick from this disease, and we might not be able to prevent that, but the one thing we do have control over is we can reach out to people and not let them slip into isolation and loneliness. Uh, so it's so important to stay connected to people. And, and the, the last thing I would say to you guys would be, you know, before Tyler asked me some questions is, I would ask you a question. And I don't know how young you are, if you're only in first or second grade, maybe this will go over your head a little bit, but I don't think so. It's how do you want to come out of this time? because you can come out uh, a weaker person who was debilitated and put down and sad and, and, and depressed and you know, uh, um, you, know you, you didn't take care of yourself mentally and you weren't talking to people, so you're just all kind of wacky and all kinds of screwed up. Well, you're all a little bit screwed up, right? Because you weren't studying and you weren't consistent. You can come out the same. You come out the same. I could be the same person, you know, just the same person when it started, or you could come out a better person. But the only way for you to come out better and stronger from this is if you work on yourself, if you work on self-improvement, if you read, pray, meditate, engage, forge stronger bonds with your, with your family, your friends, and then people that you might not have connected with. And one more thing I would say to you, there's no more distractions, guys and girls, there's no more distractions. There's no soccer, there's no tennis, there's no dance, there's no swimming, there's no field hockey, there's no lacrosse, there's no baseball, there's no softball, there's no uh, taekwondo or what, and maybe you're still doing some of those things virtually online. And sports are not a distraction, they're a very good thing. But all of that time has to be filled somehow. So maybe you can fill it by connecting with other people and working on self-improvement. I, I wanna to touch on all three of them. Um, let's start with the looking inside. Um, now, for you in your own home, there's an obvious difference between you and your children. You look different. And with your son, with his autism, 
it, those are obvious things. But for most children, um, looking on the inside, there are a lot of kids that are struggling with things that you would never know by looking at them that they're struggling. How is it then that we can start to look on the inside of people or notice people that maybe need a friend that you wouldn't think of um, right away? Because we all know, we all have to acknowledge, Tyler, that we're all going through something. You sh I always teach people, you should never compare your insides with someone else's outside. So usually we say, okay, I feel lousy. I feel bad. I feel sad. And I look at someone else and I look at what they're wearing or their sneakers or how they're acting and they seem to be. So, so, I, so I assume they have it all together. But when I talk to them a little bit more, I find out that they're just like me. And I'll give you a perfect example. I speak at a, uh, a private school in Virginia every year, and I was there several years ago. It was an all-girls school. There were 80 girls in the seventh grade, and they wanted me to give an assembly, which I did, and then uh, meet with 20 of the girls at a time in a small group and just kind of uh, debrief and talk about They could ask me questions about what I talked about. Mm -hmm. And in my second group of, of, of seventh grade girls were going around, and the third or fourth girl who shared began to cry. and her name was Skylar and she started, she's crying and she's, you know, pouring her heart out to me and all the other girls are paying attention and I'm trying to be very present for her. And she said to me, Mr. Flood, I don't fit in at this school. I'm adopted. I'm not like anybody else here. And I said, you know, Skylar, that's okay. I mean, I understand that why you would feel that way. And I really listened and, and again, try to be really present for her and the other girls are paying attention. After she was finished sharing, we all took a moment and just took a breath, went to the girl next to her. That girl turned to her. She said, Skylar, my name's Charlotte, and I know how you feel because I'm adopted too. And they were sitting two inches apart, and neither one of them knew that about each other. Like, we all think that that person next to us is either fine or not, but it's only when we share something about ourselves and bring it out. And that's very courageous to do. Not a lot of people can do that. But when you do, watch what happens. Right. Watch what happens. Well, so that ties really well into your next point. If, if we're sharing and reaching out to others, uh, you mentioned specifically reaching out to teachers. And I just want to give a testimonial to that. I am a teacher. And over the last few weeks and months, <clears throat> I have a file in my office where I keep my thank you cards and, and notes from students. I'm pulling that out all the time. Awesome. Because we do need it right now. Awesome. I'm, I'm sorry I warned you. I'm, I'm a really okay. emotional person. I usually can keep it together. But it, this has been hard for us. And it's not because our job's necessarily much harder or easier. It's different. The hard thing is we don't see you progressing in the same way. So I don't have that same connection. I still, I, we had an online party last week. I've driven things to my students' houses so I could see them and hand things off. I'm trying to keep connections with my students, but we don't have that same day-to-day -day connection that we had before. And so reaching out, I, I think that's so important, um, but it's not just teachers. The other people at our schools too, I, you know, I've written thank yous to the janitors, to the lunch ladies who are still working and doing things. And I think, to your point earlier about reaching out and sharing, it's, it's developing this skill of seeking out people who need that. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to cultivate that as a habit, as a daily thing, so it becomes part of who we are, so we can just continually be reaching out? I think it's, it, it is, it's a, it, it might be an uncomfortable habit for some people, Tyler, to, to form, you know, just it's weird talking to my teacher. But I, I, one thing that I, I hope, I, I think I know will come out of this is a different relationship between students and teachers. Because you're, you, just the mere fact that you're seeing the teacher in their home, maybe they're only, maybe they're in front of the same background every day, or the dog runs by. And that's another piece of conversation that you can have with them. Like I've seen, I've seen kids and teachers bond over uh, second day spaghetti. Like I heard a kid one time say, you know, you think you have to make these like deep connections, but I heard it, a, a kid over, he overheard his teacher saying, I like second day spaghetti. And the kid said, oh, Mr. Smith, you like second day spaghetti? I like second day spaghetti. It's just a matter of talking about, and if you ask enough questions about of someone, 
you know, there's no reason why. See, I think teachers, this way, I think teachers should, first of all, they should know three things about each of their kids, each of their students. And the teacher, the kids should know three things about their teachers. So in other words, you should, and, and if you have 30 students, they should know 90 things about you. Each one should know three different things. So you go around the class and you say, ask me three questions about yourself. Okay, Mr. Uh, tell me about your fifth birthday, fifth birthday, Mr. Christian said, like, you know, tell, right? So, mm -hmm. so it's just asking questions of people, taking a genuine interest of people. People love talking about themselves. Teachers love talking about themselves. Kids should not be afraid to ask questions. It's like, and it, and it, it wanes. You're in an elementary school, so they'll ask you a thousand questions. It, we lose kids, forget it's still okay to ask my teacher questions in sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth grade. So it's so important to connect with people. Um, and lifelong friendships and bonds can be formed just by asking people questions and finding things about, out about them. Great. Thank you. Um, so being in this pandemic right now, it's a little bit challenging because. Um, your, your third challenge was to not let someone eat alone. And, and yeah. now we're doing that virtually, right? So we're having to reach out um, using social distancing and, and not being face-to-face -face with, with people. Um, when I was younger, I, I was the kid who ate alone. Um, and I won't go into that story now. But as I've reflected on that in my life, I thought, well, how come I wasn't willing to reach out and go to other kids and, and, and make that effort I think the first step is just doing something hard. You just mentioned asking questions and being interested in others. Um, for kids who are stuck at home right now and, and don't have the same opportunities we normally have, what kind of advice would you have for them in, in taking that first step and reaching out to someone, a peer, um, that they might not normally talk to, might not normally associate with? That's, that's a really scary thing for a lot of kids. It can be. And, and uh, approaching them probably the most, well, the simplest way would be, you know, through social media or a text. But I think what would be really out of the box would be if you are thinking of someone, first of all, I mean, this is like a, a weird adult thing, right? When you're thinking of someone, it means you should reach out to them. I think it's the universe like sending you a message, but I don't want to get all metaphysical and everything. But anyway, I think putting a pen to paper and sending them a letter. And just because and it, it's something like tangible. I love getting mail, not bills or, you know, junk mail, but I love getting mail and I re we rarely get mail anymore. But if, if you're thinking of someone, even if you just wrote them, look, hey, I was thinking about you today. I know it's a little strange that I'm not reaching out to you by text or Instagram or Snapchat or sending you a, a, a TikTok video, but I'm... Um, but I'm just thinking about you. And I just, and my mom and I are writing notes out and hey, I hope you're well. And here's a picture of me running with my dog, I, you know, and, and put it in the mail and, the, and your friend or even the person you're just trying to connect with is gonna, oh my God, he, he, Tyler wrote me a letter. Like, think about that. But it, it, it doesn't take a lot, but it, me, it the letter means so much more than, than you, there's so much more energy on the recipient from the recipient than there is by the person sending it. It's so powerful. But I, but I think if you start thinking of someone, it's a message coming to you that you should reach out to them. I know that sounds weird to a, like a third grader, but guess what? That's what it is. Yeah. Well, and honestly, so I wrote 27 letters this week. Yes. I have, I have 27 students. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Mr. And, and for me, I, I haven't even put them in the mail yet. I have to do that today. But just writing the letter made me feel better. Um, it reminded me of, of our relationship and what I like about them. And, and so just the, the experience of writing the letter was so valuable even before they got it. So uh, I, I can attest to that. Thank you. Well, I, I really appreciate your time today, David. Um, if kids want to learn more about you or if schools want to have you come in to speak to their schools, where should they go to find out more? Sure. So you can go to my webpage. It's davidjflood.com. But I am with a group called Top Youth Speakers. So topyouthspeakers.com. I, I am one of 16 or 18 speakers um, who travels the country. Last year, I was in 102 uh, schools, I think, in 38 or 39 states. Uh, so, but I do speak all over the country. So topyouthspeakers.com. And my 
as far as social media, kids, if you want to connect, it's Instagram and I'll put funny pictures up and things like that. If the adults want to connect with me, it's David J. Flood, Youth Motivational Speaker on, uh, on Facebook. And I do a little bit of stuff on LinkedIn and Twitter, but really more, really more the Facebook pages for my connections um, with teachers, administrators, counselors, et cetera, superintendents, et cetera. Cool. Thanks. We'll, we'll link those up in the description for the video. Great. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tyler. Have a good day.